Welcome back into the GSMC Sports Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network as we are now going to continue on with our preview for our previews for every NFL team. This week we are doing the NFC South and we have the New Orleans Saints for you today. And with the Saints, I think that it's very interesting the conversations that take place surrounding quarterback Derek Carr. Because Carr is somebody that, especially early on in his Raiders career, I felt like was going a little bit under the radar in terms of what he was able to produce. And obviously, the final couple years there in Las Vegas were not good, which is ultimately why he ends up being moved to the New Orleans the New Orleans Saints and Carr was not not great last year but I also think that he sort of shouldered on a little bit more blame than was fair ultimately there is a lot of youth surrounding him at the skill positions and the offensive line I don't think that it was all that talented of a roster per se and Derek Carr definitely could be better and would be able to elevate the team should he be able to figure it out once again. But, I again, I think that it's almost a little bit unfair the type of scrutiny Carr faced last season. Now he's 33 years old. At this point, he is in that prove-it stage still of his career where it would be, it would be sort of easy to write him off. But he is still on the books for two more seasons fully guaranteed we're going to be diving more into the specific financial situations in the following segment here but Derek Carr set to make over 50 million dollars against the cap in 2025 so as much as you definitely it feels like the Saints could be in the market for finding a new quarterback. It's going to be extremely difficult to maneuver the current number that he's on. So I think the car still has another two years in New Orleans. But you know, let me know what your thoughts are that on in that. Let me know what your thoughts on that are in the comment section. Excuse me, but. Looking at their offensive stats from last year, I mean, they were overall pretty solid. Again, passing offense 11th, scoring scoring offense 9th. So Derek Carr definitely, you know, left some to be desired. But at the same time, I thought overall he was pretty productive for them. And heading into this season, I think that it's interesting as well when you just talk about what kind of pieces he has to work with because no Michael Thomas they ended up releasing him during the offseason Chris Olave in my opinion is I'm very confident in him as a wide receiver one moving forward back-to-back 1,000 yard seasons through his first two seasons in the NFL I think that he is an excellent player. It's just about what is behind him. Where Rashid Shahid, somebody who's shown flashes, has spent a lot of time playing in special teams, and we know that he can be an explosive athlete, maybe with some potential to be a deep threat, but not a super fundamentally sound wide receiver that you feel like is going to be you know, consistent for you. A.T. Perry is a player that I really liked going back to his time at Wake Forest. I just thought that he was a very intelligent wide receiver. He's got nice size to him as well, standing at six foot five. So he's got the size. He's a pretty solid route runner. I think that he can go up and make jump balls as well. So somebody who's been flashing some in preseason and in training camp that I think A.T. Perry could definitely take on a bigger role this upcoming season. They bring in Cedric Wilson, which is fine. They bring in Equinemius St. Brown, again, fine. But still not ultra-talented receiving room, but some interesting pieces to play around with. Jawan Johnson has emerged as a pretty nice tight end as well for them. But, yeah, not one of those elite players. Their offensive line ultimately is fine, I, don't, I wouldn't say it's great. I think that you're relying on a lot of youth, obviously, which is part of the reason why, you know, it's there are some question marks there. Talais Fuaga, who they drafted with the their first round pick this past year, he's been dealing with some injuries in the preseason that 
have limited some of his reps. Trevor Penning, especially, I thought, in their game against San Francisco over the weekend, I thought that, you know, Trevor Penning looked really good. He's a nasty player, and I forget exactly what it was. I think, you know, attitude is like a conversation around him in terms of he can be maybe a little bit rigid is probably the nicest way to put it. But honestly, I don't need my offensive linemen to always be Jason Kelsey, be super nice guys. You got to be a little nasty sometimes when you're in the trenches. So Trevor Penning is somebody I definitely have my eye on as well as somebody who could potentially be a breakout for the Saints. Cesar Ruiz, pretty solid player as well. Overall, it's just a fine offensive line that don't feel great about necessarily but I don't think it should be a total liability for them either so the offense should be fine this year and the defense as well you talk about where they were at yeah, and kind of fine all things considered I mean this is a Saints team that doesn't get very much positive coverage I feel like from the national perspective but they're they're a solid roster now you look at their defense it's hit and miss at some areas. Um, Demario Davis still holding it down in the middle. Still one of the best middle linebackers in the NFL despite his age. Now, I mention his age because of the fact that he is 35 years old. Uh, turning 36 in January. That is a long time to be playing middle linebacker in the NFL. So you do have to wonder if age is eventually going to catch up with him. And that's kind of... The sentiment for a lot of their cornerstones on defense, where you can say that about Tamario Davis, Cam Jordan, Cameron Jordan, also sort of, he's already, I think, started to hit the decline, but, you know, also 35 years old, last year put together one of his least productive seasons in his career, but... Again, makes sense considering the age. Now, obviously, Carl Granderson on the opposite side of him. Him emerging has been a big difference maker for this Saints team as well. So, you know, not not to say that they haven't been able to at least develop other talent across from him, but Cam Jordan, another one of those aging, you know, key defensive players for them. And it's... That's the case on all three levels as well, with Tyran Matthew also still very productive for them, keeping his name in the conversation for top 10 safeties in the NFL, but he is going into, um, he, he's he's been playing since 2013, so what is that, 10, 11 years or so in the NFL at 32 years old. He's just an older player now, especially for defensive backs. We don't really see them age the same quite as often anymore. So some some names that can definitely produce for them, but in the back of your head, definitely are wondering about whether or not they are going to be able to continue to give that level of production. But again, the Saints, it's not just the three of those guys, I feel like. Willie Gay was a really nice addition for them as well, was on that Super Bowl winning Chiefs team. I believe he was on both of the past two years. So, you know, that was a nice signing there. Marshawn Lattimore, definitely still holding it down as well. Paulson Adebo has been a little bit of a lesser known um, player, but is still a very nice pro for them, especially the past couple years. They also got Kool-Aid McKinstry able to draft him 41st overall in the second round this past year. McKinstry was definitely in conversations of being a first rounder for a lot of these seasons. So being able to snag him when you do, I think that's a really nice pickup for the Saints. You know, Tyron Matthew is one half of the safety conversation. I don't love the options on the other half. Right now, Jordan Hoden is one option. Jonathan Abram, who they ended up bringing back this past year on a new deal because he was able to step up for them down the stretch of the season. Maybe this is finally when he breaks out a former first-round pick from 2019. But overall, it's a solid roster. It's definitely not great, but I think that they do still, especially in this NFC South, 
have a real chance to compete as they did last year. I believe they won nine games last season and were in it until the very end. But looking at their schedule for this upcoming season, they have the fifth easiest strength of schedule according to Sharp Football Analysis. So they're definitely going to have some chances in front of them. Key out-of-division games, I'm looking at at home against the Eagles week three. In Kansas City, week five is obviously a tough one. At home, week 11 against the Browns is one that definitely piques my interest as well. I know Browns aren't necessarily one of the world beaters, but a very good team. Another very tough team, as are the Saints in their you know, history, especially the Browns coming off the season they had. Saints in their history of being a physical defense. Cam Jordan, I just mentioned that he's older now, but I think he still has that same nastiness. He was just on the Mina Kimes show talking about how much he hates the Falcons. I still think that he has that mental edge to him that the Saints are going to be able to be physical with anybody. And then last out of division game in terms of toughness that I'm looking at is in Green Bay week 16. That's coming right at the end of the season as well. Could be a crucial one for the playoff crunch. But uh, one other game I wanted to highlight, not for level of difficulty, but just sort of legacy of the franchise and legacy of a former big part of the franchise is week seven at home. The return of Sean Payton to the Superdome at, on opposing sidelines now with the Broncos. Broncos at Saints week seven. Definitely one that Sean Payton has circled. Going to be a very interesting thing to watch how that plays out. But ultimately, Saints are going to have their opportunities. They're not the most talented roster in the league, but I mean, their line is at seven and a half. And I see the Saints, I wouldn't say easily necessarily, especially because it's going to come very much so down to Derek Carr and what he looks like, but I think the Saints should comfortably be able to cover the over. And I have them winning nine games this year, going nine and eight. When I first went through the schedule, I actually had them at 10 and seven, but I did sort of rethink and knock them down, so... Nine wins, I mean, that is in the mix 100% in this NFC South. The other day, I gave the Falcons 10 wins. So, to to that point, it would be the, the Falcons number one over the Saints. But, again, Saints are going to have their chances. Those head-to-head -head matchups are also going to be crucial. But let me know what your thoughts are on in the comments section. I want to go a little bit deeper into the financial situation surrounding the New Orleans Saints and just talking about how this plays out for them in these next couple years. So we will be diving into that. But first, a quick break. Do not go anywhere. We will be right back. 